macular pigmentation measurements in macular diseases. A brief introduction. In 1780, the macular lupus was first described. In 1866, interaction of blue light with the macula was reported. In the 80s, the molecular definition of carotenoids in the in Zashantin were discovered. Its classical image by Azra and co workers from the 70s shows the distribution of macular pigments in the human retina. Macular pigments in the immunization team are responsible for the yellow color of the macula. There is no new synthesis today reported on macular pigments, and the intake is by the diet. Macular pigments are important macular optic filters against blue light. And they may also be very important antioxidants in the macula. A large randomized clinical study, the age-related eye disease study, have shown that high doses of antioxidants, vitamin C and E, zinc, and beta-carotene, reduce by 28% the risk of progression from intermediate to severe AMD. More recently, the ARADS-2 added lutein in zeaxanthin and omega-3. The results have shown that lutein may substitute beta-carotene. In addition, in people with low dietary intake of lutein, the pigment may induce a reduction by 20% of progression of AMD. So in our opinion, the measurement of macular pigments can be helpful, helpful by three means. To identify patients at risk for AMD. Second, to monitor AMD patients. And third, to evaluate response to oral supplements. In order to measure macular pigments, we would like to shortly present six methods available in the literature. The, the four objective methods are fundus reflectometry, fundus autofluorescence, resonance Raman spectroscopy, visual evocative potential, and the two psychophysics methods are heterochromatic flicker photometry and minimum motion photometry. We start presenting the fundus reflectometry. Using a single wavelength fundus of fundus reflectometry, macular pigment can be easily detected with a novel equ equipment. Light is emitted and reflected in the macular area and paramacular area. The result is the measurement of macular pigment parameters and the distribution profile. To perform the exam, three simple steps should be taken. First, you take the picture with the fundus camera. Second, you start the analysis software. And third, you review the result. The review map is composed of a 3D map on the top right in the image a 2D image in the center and at the bottom the values of the macular pigment density measurements. This study by Pipis and co-workers from uh, uh, Central Europe have shown their average of macular pigment with the, this technique. They have found 0.1826 different to our values of average of macular pigment density measurements. The second method is the fundus autofluorescence. In this method works by two different 
light wavelengths in the fluorescence generated by lipofoxin and interfered by micropigments. Micropigments emit different autofluorescence inside and at out outside of the fovea. However, this method is influenced by opaque media and requires triple dilation. The results enable construction of a density measurement map in a 10 degree ray in central fovea. This is the measurement of the autofluorescence to the Heidelberg. The next method we shortly present is the resonance Raman spectral spectroscopy. Carotenoids have a characteristic Raman spectral fingerprint. Carotenoid molecules shift during laser light color to green. When equipment is available to detect cutaneous, not yet ocular carotenoids with this method. The last objective met test is a visual evoked potential. There is no yet equipment available with this technique. The principle is isolation of s cone specific in blue-yellow responses. The technique is affected by various factors like chromatic aberration, lens yellowing, and macro pigmentation. The two psychophysics methods are heterochromatic flicker photometry and minimal motion photometry. For the heterochromatic flicker photometry, equipment determines pigment density by presenting a light stimulus of two altern alternating wavelengths until no or minimal flicker occur occurs. Strong stronger blue light is required for minimal flicker to reach the receptors. This is one equipment with this technique and this is the second equipment with the MPS2 electron commercially available. The last technique is the minimal motion photometry which is a cousin of heterochromatic flicker photometry. The method consists of a color bars that move a, across a circular, circular central visual field. The two colors are in maximum and zero absorption of macular pigments. We now present some clinical case. One patient here with the MD this is the macular pigment density measurement, which increased three months after ingestion of uh, lutein. One more patient with severe AMD in one eye and drusen in the fellow eye. Here the measurement of the MPD. which increased a couple months after lutein intake. Another patient with a relative with AMD, a mom, with high levels of macular pigment. In conclusion, lutein and zeaxanthin are important macular pigments. Macular pigments may be detected with current uh, techniques. Macro pigment measurements technology have been approved and macular pigment measurements may be useful for diagnosing and monitoring of AMD. Thank you.